I stand before you today to talk about some thoughts and understandings I have of rites of passage and how this can play a pivotal role in this discussion around moving towards a fossil-free world that can uh, shift towards something that could benefit from rites of passage. Rites of passage is a human tradition that's been with us for most of the human lifespan on Earth. It's only within the past 200 years that it's become something that we seldom think about. I think that it offers something that can help us repair the social damage that we've experienced to get forward into some of the higher realms of using all of the solutions and bridging this ingenuity gap that exists before us. In the past 15 years, the things I've been involved with revolve a lot around dance culture, around celebration and creating tribal community, putting together with the elements of rave culture things that reflect human values that can keep people empowered to do the work that they do in the world. Joining together with other networks that are doing similar things through events like Earth Dance, I've discovered that there are thousands of people around the world that are motivated towards the same values and are using this vehicle in the same way, bringing together art, creativity, technology, and multi-generations of people. And parallel to this has been also a, a deep integration and finding hope and inspiration in the indigenous cultures of the world. And this has taken me to many ceremonies in North America as well as the Philippines and most recently Amazonia. Often I've found that these worlds have intertwined and despite being a culture that uses celebration as its primary vehicle, like any community, we encounter times of great difficulty where we have to find solutions to overcome circumstances such as the start of a new family, uh, issues with abuse, um, encounters with addiction, and all the hosts of challenges that come beneath us in our daily lives. And so, the indigenous cultures and the rites of passage have provided some very informative foundations to examine. The term rites of passage was introduced by uh, Charles Arnold van Gennep, the uh, European ethnographer who described rites of passage as being the process of moving from one social status to another. He described them in three phases, separation, threshold, and reincorporation, or the return. The majority of these form the, hum the universal milestones that we can see in the life cycle of all human beings. And anthropologists can point at these for clues to the underlying values that make up the society and give their social structure stability. They also, in the indigenous world, serve as a pillar to unite the people and connect them with the land and the elements that give them strength to live every day and the spirit world. Building off of this work of, of Van Gennep was the great mythologist Joseph Campbell, who extended this into his, his work in mythology in his book, Hero of a Thousand Faces, taking it into the idea that there is a heroic journey that underlies the, the stories that make up mythologies around the world, and even in our modern culture, where producers like George Lucas have incorporated this structure into films like the Star Wars trilogy. I think that it's empowering to think that each one of us are on a heroic journey and that if we look out for each other and the world around us, that we can 
turn the tide of many of the things and the forces that we stand against. So let's go a little deeper into the st stages of the transitions that were described earlier. In separation, we move away from the world that we knew, from the, the known status that we held in the world, whether this is uh, through the natural cycles of life and aging, or if it's sometimes in the form of a, a crisis. And from here, this stage can sometimes go on for, for a period of time. We move into the threshold, into the unknown. And this stage is characterized in the human story, the human cycle, as adolescence. And it's a very long period of time. And I'd like to suggest that our world today is in its stage of adolescence. And that's a very volatile time. And it requires the same kind of support that we give to the individual youth that are going through this. We need to consider this on a more large scale. During this time, which is also considered an ordeal, we can have experiences of despair, of anger, of fear, of terror, and all the different things that make us want to give up. And this is why it's very important that we create ceremonies during these times to create a container that can hold the forces and bind them that will allow us to create that transition and give us hope that in the future we'll be able to do it again as we reach towards a new phase in the next transition that will come inevitably as we go towards our death. During this time also, we have to consider that we're also going through it on our own. These are different examples of threshold rites that may be familiar. The sweat lodge, where we go into the womb of the earth itself. And also, also um, medicines with sacramental plants. It could be a venture into the desert for 10 days of camping. <laughs> or another one that I've found to be very useful and accessible in most cities is the labyrinth. I think one of the things that our ancestors had more connection to was the ancestors themselves. And we can consider that ourselves are, are one day going to be ancestors to other people. Overcome the ordeal, we may come to a place where we experience peace, compassion, and a fulfillment. And then we have to make that choice to return. And sometimes that return is really benefited when we have people there to receive us and to acknowledge that we've taken a great quest. And this is often what rites of passage that are happening in our society lack. And for this, it's been considered that this could be what causes many of the addictions that we see in our society. We have to be able to carry ourselves in both worlds, our inner and outer, the material and the spiritual. I'd like to imagine that our society can become more cognizant of rites of passage and be able to incorporate them in all the areas of society, from school to employment to the places of power, and consider what it would be like to have a society where our leaders had been through these rites of passage, where our citizens have a chance of becoming not just older people in the future, but elders who can build resiliency for future generations. If we want to look to who the great teacher of rites of passage is, we can look no further than nature itself, who through its yearly seasons and cycles teaches us the cycle of creation, decay, and regeneration. Let us be good students 
of the earth and nature and bring this through for this time that we are in of global adolescence. Thank you.